Team coverage continues right here on Good Day Austin. Welcome in meteorologist Carlo Falco about how in the world do bridges ice up first before the main roads? Yeah, it always seems that kind of thing happens around here, especially when we get this really cold air to force its way in from the north and we get a little tiny bit of freezing rain, freezing drizzle. The bridges just go crazy and there's crashes and just dangerous driving on those bridges and overpasses. Well, this is all because basically the bridges are elevated off of the ground. That basically means that they are going to be losing heat unevenly, uh, but unlike those normal roads that don't have the ground to insulate them, basically the ground. Remember a couple days ago, we were like 90 degrees here. The ground is absorbing a lot of that heat and then radiating that back out into the surface roadways. Unfortunately, bridges, of course, are up above the ground, so the cold air can get to both the top and the bottom of those bridges, not to mention there's just less material for the air to cool down. So that allows quicker heat loss and allows those bridges to cool down much, much quicker. So basically, due to exposure, there's no ground to help insulate. Uh, those bridges are really going to cool on down very quickly. Also, we're going to talk about this cold front. This has been a crazy type of thing with warm air advancing. It hits the cold air, which was moving on in from the north, and it sort of pushes its way up over top as that warm air, which is less dense than the cold air. That basically pushes the clouds up over top and then that essentially brings in the chance for some freezing rain, freezing drizzle, sleet and snow. We though are right in that freezing rain and freezing drizzle area, which is why we're just going to see more of this freezing rain and drizzle as we go throughout the remainder of the day. Now it is important to remember as you do head out the door, make sure you de-ice your windshield, scrape it off, turn on the defroster, give yourself extra time, one, to defrost and de-ice your car, and then two, to get to where you're going to need to be safely. Uh, you use your defroster and please be patient. Uh, crucially, do not use hot water. If you use hot water on a very cold windshield, you're going to crack the windshield, then you have to replace the windshield later. Do not, uh, just do use Cool water, if you need it, with this type of situation we have right here, you don't really need to use cool water. Just use your scraper. Just don't push down too hard. You run the risk of scratching your windshield and causing a weak spot in the windshield for your defroster to then go and crack later on and then use a moderate, light to moderate pressure. Uh, don't use a knife, crucially. Don't use a knife. You could slip and cut yourself. Uh, use a scraper if you have one or if you're really hard up, your credit card can work as well. Uh, essentially, uh, you're going to need to make sure that you have extra time. De-icing your windshield, scraping your windshield takes extra time, so make sure you're dressed correctly to be outside in the cold. Of course, those temperatures are down into the 20s, and make sure you drink a nice big hot cup of coffee and then bring it in the thermos with you as you're driving to work. Remember, if you are going to be driving, well, when you are driving to work or wherever you need to go, once your car is warmed up, turn down the defroster or uh, turn it off simply because if you keep the defroster on for too long, it can crack your windshield. That's how you get that nice big crack which goes along the bottom of your windshield.